In this video, I'm going to go over how to install the USB image writing tool uh, for Linux users, and I'll show you the link for those of you that are using Mac and Windows where you can download it as well. Now, if you're a Linux user, from time to time you might want to install an ISO to a USB device so that you can use, for example, diagnostic tools and other distributions you might want to put on your uh, USB device so that it will boot directly into it but in order to show you how to use the diagnostic tools that I'll be adding in the future you need some sort of ISO to USB tools I had the boot QT the GNOME Rider, the MX Live USB Maker and Popsicle today I'm going to focus on Etcher, Belina Etcher and if you found the video on YouTube I will provide a link below the video so that you can see how to install it on your system depending upon what type installation you want. On my website I show you three ways for installing it. Now Belina Etcher is just allows you to download an ISO image and then actually put that ISO image on a USB device making it live bootable. Now at the time of creating this video the version the latest version is 1.18.11 if you click this link below you can actually look at the website itself and show you the version you can install the dev package the uh, RPMs for Red Hat users and uh, Fedora users for Windows user you can download the installer you can use the portable version and here's for Mac users I also have the link to the github so if you click that, I did, click that link where I go here it goes to the github and this allows you to install the RPMs for Fedora and Red Hat users, the Debian Ubuntu based users, Windows users, if you want to install the uh, app images like a portable user for, for Linux users which is work on both Fedora and Ubuntu it's a little slower than installing it by the dev file or the RPM you have the DMG for Mac users and the executable for Windows users but at the time of making this there is a pre-release which is a newer release but think of this like a beta so it could be buggy so I recommend installing the latest version so by clicking onto it it will allow you to download it you can double click the dev file it will bring up your package manager. Now I'm using uh, GDebbie on my system uh, to install it. So this is what you're looking at. If there would be any missing dependencies, it would show up here. But when you install the package, it would get the missing dependencies, install them first, and then it would install the software. But when you hit install, it asks ask you for your password. Wait to see same version installed before you close out this. And then you can delete the file that you installed. You no longer really need it on there even to uninstall it. You can say remove package but I don't keep the dev files just to remove it. I know how to remove it by using uh, different methods on my system. Then it will place it somewhere in your menus. In this case will be in my accessories menu. Another way to install it is by the terminal. Now when you're using the wget command at the time of creating this video it's downloading the most current version here. What you need to do is look at the most current version by clicking the, the get hub link and in the future it, this may be the most current version and if so well, here's what you'll do is you right click say copy the link address and put that behind the wget command which is here and it will install the most current version at that time and if there's any missing dependencies then you run this particular command and that will fix any dependency issues that you may have another way of showing you how you can download it is by installing it by the app image by clicking the app image you can download the app image right click properties choose to allow this to execute the program as a file so when you double click onto it it will actually run in the background like a portable app now let's actually take a look at using Belina Etcher when you click on Belina Etcher it will take a few seconds to load now Belina Etcher is a very simple program all you have is your settings and the settings says to send a information anonymously to Belina Etcher. I turn that off. If you want to lend, send them data, you can. I flip that off. It says trim unallocated space of raw images in the uh, ext type partitions. That's turned on by default. This just currently shows you the current version at the time. And then this takes you to their help section on their website. So there's not a lot, a lot of bells and whistles to it. Now once that you start Belina Etcher you can flash from a file which I'll be doing or you can actually put the URL so in this case if I wanted to put the, the dev file or not the dev file the ISO file for a operating system let's say for example I'm gonna 
install the the operating system slits if that's how you pronounce it it's a rolling release it was updated on September the 3rd of 2023 the reason uh, I'm going to do this as an example is because it's only 53.4 megabytes which is extremely small one of the smallest type of Linux operating systems that you can actually use so you can actually copy that link here and say copy the link address and within the program you don't actually have to download it you can say flash from the URL click that Put the valid URL and hit OK, and it will start installing it from that link. It will actually go out, download the material, download the file for you, and it will install it for you. So that way, that's one way of doing it. You can say to clone a USB from one USB to the other. But here, I'm going to choose flash from file. When I do, I'm going to go to my downloads folder. I'm going to go to my ISOs file, and here is that rolling release that I showed you on the website. I hit open, and I say select the target. And this allows me to choose the only flash drive I have installed on my system or plugged into my system at the time is a verbatim store and go. So I'm going to select that flash drive. Now there are four hidden ones that I don't have plugged into anything right now. I hit select and then I'm ready to now hit flash. And so it's now going to ask me for my password. I put my pseudo password into my system. I hit authenticate and we just sit back and wait for the process to finish. Now since I'm using a very small ISO file it won't take long to, to install this on the system. Now it's validating and it's finished. So it says now I can flash another. It shows you that it flashed the device and it finished. So I can now close this out. Now when I go to the actual flash drive it's not showing here. When I reboot, it should boot up into that because when it finishes flashing it, it disconnects or unmounts from it. So if I re reboot and have it set to my USB, it should load the live USB onto the system. So that small operating system should be my live operating system. So if you're trying to install a US ISO to a USB then you might want to give Etcher a try. It's very simple. It's not hard to use. It's one of the simplest ones that I do have on my USB image writing tools. You know these right here are great. All of these are great options but this one right here is probably the simplest ones. Hopefully this video has helped someone and have a great day.